Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this video I'm going to address a question I get asked quite often and that's about selling prints but it's about aspects of setting up your business for selling prints. Um, that can be cards, it can be small items. I'm not really talking about selling photo, large photos and that. I've got quite a few videos covering the business side of photography. This is perhaps more on the craft side it's where people go, well, I want a printer. Is this the best printer for making cards to sell, for example? Now, the first thing I have to say is, are you really serious about it? Um, because, um, yeah, if I'm honest, an awful lot of questions I get asked about the technical side of things really tell me more about the lack of thought for, is this a real business or not? So, um, I've got lots of things on the business side of stuff, so I won't dwell on that overly here, but this is about things you need to think about, about printer choices. And one of the biggest thing I get is people going, well, I want this because it's cheap. Um, are you doing proper costing for the business? Now, the natural follow up from that is, is it a serious business? If you're just looking to make a few pictures, sell a few pictures, that's fine. Put them on Etsy or something like that. Dip your toe in the water, see if it's right. By all means, think about you know, whatever printer you like. There are you know, expensive ones, cheaper ones. Cheaper ones are generally more difficult to get good results, consistent results out of. Can be done, but in general, it takes more effort. But if you're just doing this as a test, then okay go for a basic printer. But if you're serious about doing it for a business and you're thinking, well, I might make something of this, um, it needs a bit more thought than just saying, well, I have a budget of $250 for buying the printer and that's it. What's the best printer I can get for that? Or, you know, 200 quid, 300 quid, something like that. Um, that, in a way, is simply the wrong question to ask. You're coming at it from the wrong direction. So it is not generally, if you're looking at the business side, it's not really about a printer that fits your budget. It's a printer that does what you want. And the printer that does what you want and does it easily, does it well, will make you more productive, allow you to sell, produce more prints. Now, we'll come back to the actual, you know, who, who's going to buy these prints is, is I'll, I'll end off on. But really, it's far more than just the printer choice. It's things like media choices. So, for example, um, I have got here, this is on um, some pre-creased card. And this is what happens when you print on a card that is not meant for uh, inkjet use. Now, the classic question I get asked would be from somebody in the States who says, I want to print on 60 pound card um, and whatever, or, or so. um, will this printer do it? Now, first of all, um, pounds as a measure of um, paper, um, its density uh, or weight per area is not used outside the US. So such terms mean nothing to me. Um, we use, the rest of the world uses grams per square meter. Um, however, what it does tell me is that almost certainly you're trying to use a commercial card that's meant for commercial printing rather than an inkjet card. If you use the wrong card, you get results like this. Now, um, I'm not sure on the video that this will show how awful the quality is of this print. There's detail there, but the colors are washed out. There's no depth to the blacks. It's this um, test image I've got here. Uh, now, I've got a series of these test images, which are made when I'm testing printers, when if I'm testing card, and they allow me to just check the kind of detail that you need if you're producing cards. Uh, they're available. I'll put a link to them in the notes for the video. But this is wrong. It's useless. Um, I would never have the nerve to try and sell something printed like this. And this was, if I look at it, printed on a pretty good printer, Canon Pro 200. So it's not about getting a more expensive printer and you'll be able to print on this card. It is you're using the wrong card for this type of printer, for the inkjet type printer. I could try, apart from that, he doesn't like cards, printing on the big Epson P5000 here, pigment ink printer, really nice printer, produces great prints. If I put this card through that printer and it will go through that printer, 
I'll get results not dissimilar from that. I will get bad results. So first up, no cheap card. The other thing is, you notice I've got a stack of media here. Um, quite a lot of the more basic printers let you put one sheet at a time. They don't print terribly fast. So you're going to be spending quite a while watching cards slowly make its way through the printer and come out of the printer. Um, now, you may like doing that. I don't. Uh, if I was going to produce lots of copies of something, I'd want a printer where I could just stack up a load of cards, go away, do something useful, uh, design more cards or, or anything, but wait for the printer. So you have to remember that aspect as well. So smaller, cheaper, more basic printers often have difficulty too with thicker media. So uh, you're ending up not thinking of your time there. Yes, you can print maybe one sheet, uh, but even then, sometimes you'll find after you've used the printer for a while, it doesn't always feed. So perhaps one in 10 sheets will misfeed. Now, that may be as simple as it doesn't load properly, it, it aborts the print, or it may get stuck part way through, at which place you'll get loads of ink printed on the paper, it'll get messy, you'll get ink in the printer and your printer will get messy inside and that will make smudges on prints. So more waste of time, more waste of paper, more waste of ink. So that's you know, the perils of, of, of going cheap. Um, let's take printers, for example, one I reviewed a while ago, Canon G550. It is a basic home printer. Now, there are versions of it of a scanner as well, G650. There's a whole series of versions of them. They're essentially the same print engine, but inside it, but different things, uh, different versions. They are meant for home use. Um, for the G550, for example, on Max, color management completely broken. Now, I've worked out ways of getting around that and I got a review. I'll put a link to the actual review. Do have a look at the written reviews for these things because I can go into more technical detail of how to get things. I've even got pro printer profiles which will let you get reasonable and quite good on occasion results out of a printer like the G550. But be under no <laughs> illusions about it. I tested that printer. When I first looked at it, I nearly thought this is this is just going nowhere. Um, then I took it on a challenge, really, to see if I could get good results from a G550, and I did get G results from it. So it can be used. It's got cheap ink in it, so maybe that's good. But no, you need to put a lot of effort into using these. And even then, even though I can produce good prints, I can feed one sheet at a time, and it doesn't, at a good quality, take too long to print, but it's certainly not speedy in any way. In fact, the best card printer I looked at was an Epson Workforce one. Now, I've not got an exhaustive test of printers, so I can't say for certain, but uh, an Epson Workforce, an office printer, was able to take cards and print cards really well. Um, however, that's quite an expensive printer. I don't know what the cost is, probably about £1,200 here, $1,400, $1,500, something like that. I, I honestly don't know. I don't sell printers or ink or anything, so I don't keep you know, a, a, a tracking what prices are. But that was an expensive printer. It worked. Now people go, oh, well, it's only a four color printer. Yeah, four color printer is all you need if it's set up well and it works. Now with that, I could load sheets up, I could do it. I've got something that will actually do it. Can you afford that much? Well, if you're just dipping your toe into the water to see if anyone's actually interested in buying your cards, you probably don't want what is an office printer to, to use. Um, but just think about it that you might try a few prints for that, find it's a right pain to try and produce many, and then decide that you want a more expensive printer. So you've got things like you know, G550, simple printer, cheap inks, relatively cheap inks. Um, if you want to make your quality even more unpredictable, go for just cheap third party inks in it as well. Uh, if you like that, that sort of gambling aspect as to what's going to come out of the printer, then yeah, that's fine for that. But if you're going to emphasize cheapness, then your product will emphasize cheapness. And if your product emphasizes cheapness, so does your business. And if your business is cheap, You've limited your abilities to sell higher end products. And remember, higher end products are more profitable in general. And I'm assuming 
right at the start, I said, are you serious about this? Is this a serious business? What about another printer I've tested? The Epson ET8550, that's an ink tank printer. Now, I've had several people go, oh, I don't want that, it's too expensive. Well, look what you're getting. You're getting a larger printer. You're getting an easier to use printer. Once again, you need to take care of the color management. Um, I put links to all these printers I, I mentioned into the notes for this. So if you want to follow this up, uh, you can do. So, you know, great printer. Um, uh, another one uh, of all the printers I've tested in the last couple of years, probably the one that most exceeded my initial expectations. Uh, turns out it was capable of really nice prints. But even then, that one, you can't stack many cards. You can't do, there are lots of limitations on it if you want to use it commercially for just producing lots of prints. Um, there are you know, problems with papers, for example. Um, you know, I always keep packs of cheap paper from the stationers, you know, local stationers. Uh, print right, premium photo paper, mm, A6. Okay, I've got A6 paper here. Does the printer you're thinking of getting even support the paper you want? Now, A6 is not necessarily supported by some others. Uh, then I get people saying, well, I want to print borderless. Now, so here's a card I printed, and this one was done borderless on a pre-creased card. Um, a lot of these cards came from a local supplier of uh, Paper Spectrum here in Leicester in the UK, um, who do quite a lot of these. So I've got quite a range of these different cards. So that's printed there. This is printed borderless. Um, does the printer you've got support borderless if, if borderless is important to you? Or will you be forced to have a border on your print? Um, yeah, makes it no point you saying, well, I've got these great designs. They rely on color going or, or uh, you know, ink going right to the edge of the paper and then finding that the sizes you want to produce are not supported or that the software makes it difficult to accurately print borderless. It's one of the reasons I got this and other test images and that, you know, print test images. If you're, if you're practicing on stuff like this, cut some paper, plain paper and practice printing on plain paper it makes it a lot cheaper to discover what it can and can't do. Uh, and plain paper will just simple print. Uh, if you want to save ink, if you're feeling you know, tight fisted in that way as well, uh, just print an image with just light detail on it so it doesn't use up much ink on plain paper. There you go, you're not spending much at all. Um, if that's important to you though, reflects back on my initial thing, are you serious about this? Um, you know, how much do you want to spend? What, is it a serious business or is it a hobby? Is it something you just want? Nothing wrong with it doing a hobby. Um, I won't, I'll produce a few you know, cards like this each year. I'll use a few for Christmas and various things. Um, you know, handmade cards, hand printed cards. Yeah, there you go. They have a certain cachet in some quarters. Um, depends on the images and stuff you want. Okay, a couple of printers I mentioned there. What about, you know, I said the G550 is what it is. It's a basic printer. What about if I get a better Canon printer, something like Canon Pro 200, 300? Better quality for photos, much easier to get color profiles for the papers, better quality papers. Great for printing photo prints, but you've got a problem. And here's a pack from Pro 300. Uh, the ink cartridges in the Pro 300 and 200 are not terribly large. Um, okay, they will last a reason why we'll get quite a lot of prints out of them, but this is not the size cartridge you want to be using if you're actually running a print business. And that's why I say looking at a more expensive printer, so a more expensive one would be the Pro 1000, um, that with bigger ink cards. But the problem with well, something like the Pro 1000 is that the Pro 1000 is like most bigger printers, not nearly so good at handling small print sizes. Um, in fact, if you're printing small prints, it may be worthwhile printing larger sheets of paper and just guillotining them, just making the prints up that way. Also gets around the borderless problem as well. Uh, you just have to design slightly different, put crop marks in, and you need a good cutter as well. And that takes time, by the way, don't forget. So uh, once again, it's all about working out the true costings of whatever business you want. So what I'm saying, the essence is, yeah, by all means, go cheap if you want. If you're just 
testing things, but be prepared for difficulties and inconveniences and saying right up front, oh, it really depends what printer I'm using. Yeah, it does, but it's the business side. It's about who will buy your prints, your cards, whatever, where you're going to sell them, what volume, and also, don't forget, there's a distinct price ceiling in products like this. If your print costs you so much to make that by the time you've paid for an envelope, and although these ones do come with envelopes as well, matched envelopes for them if you buy packs of these, by the time you've done that and you've shipped it with the cost of shipping and postage, how much profitability are you actually getting on it? It's a very difficult market to get into and make a profit from. Um, I've not seen a good business case for this that didn't start off with a fairly expensive printer and making cards in bulk or even getting them shipped out to print. But then perhaps that loses what you're aiming for of being able to customise things. If you're doing that, that also takes time. It's all about the business side of it. So um, there we go. Hope that hasn't been too much of a downer because you can actually get great looking prints out of even relatively cheap printers. But it's not necessarily going to be the basis of a long term business. So don't get too hung up on choosing a cheap printer to start with. Um, except it may only be a step along the way and that if you do go for a cheap it's a cheap printer it's going to be tricky now uh, so i'll put links to all these different things if you've got questions feel free to ask questions in the comments here or email me at northlight um, it's people's questions that give me the ideas for different videos when when people ask me stuff uh, so uh, there you go um, thanks for watching please do subscribe to the channel. And if you want more of this sort of business related stuff, have a look at the business of photography playlist that I've got. And that links together all my different videos uh, of covering different aspects about the business side of photography and of printing. And I hope that's of use. So thanks for watching and bye.